Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video where we are going to have a simple derivation with respect to pointing theorem for microwave. I hope you have a background that pointing theorem is associated with the propagation of power in the wave. So up till now we are getting introduced to microwaves. Microwaves are basically the electromagnetic waves having the frequency range from 1 to 300 gigahertz. Various microwave devices, the microwave practical system that have been introduced to you people in the initial topics. We have also formulated the electron motion when the electron is in the region with respect to the electric field, magnetic field or the combined electromagnetic field. We have also solved one problem based on to that also. So let us have a simple derivation. So as we have the background of pointings theorem for electromagnetic wave from electromagnetic field theory, the pointings theorem gives you the information regarding the pointings vector and it is always denoted by P. So as it is a vector, it is generally denoted P bar here and it is actually made available by having a cross product with that of the E bar and H bar here. So basically having the pointings vectors, it is actually the average of the cross product of E bar and that of the H bar. So if you see the rectangular coordinate system, the three possible directions we have there that are X direction, Y direction and Z direction that are mutually perpendicular to each other. So microwave has electric part and the magnetic part. So if electric part is associated with respect to the variations into the X direction, magnetic part, the magnetic field is having the variations with respect to the Y direction, then the power associated with that particular microwave that is flowing through the microwave components there. So it will be in the direction that is perpendicular to X and Y also. So that will be having the variations in the Z direction here. So P bar is equal to the average of the cross product of the E bar and that of the H bar is this particular equation here. So let us name this particular equation with equation number one here. So if you are going to use the complex conjugate, so that time for average we can have the P bar expressed as one by two in the bracket here we have E bar cross product with H conjugate here. So this asterisk over the head of the vector here denotes the complex conjugate. So let us name this equation number two here. Now we have a background of Maxwell's equation. The Maxwell's equation can be expressed into the time domain as well as the frequency domain. So here we take the help of Maxwell's two equations the first two into the frequency domain. So these equations are del bar cross of E bar is equal to minus J omega mu into H bar. Let us say this is equation number three. Next to that we have del bar cross of H bar is equal to capital J bar that is the conduction current density added with J omega epsilon into capital E bar. So let us say this is equation number four here. Now to these equations we can have dot multiplications by the conjugate or simply the vector here that we shall perform here. So by the next step the third equation we take the left hand side del bar across of E bar here. So to this left hand side we have dot multiplication with the complex conjugate of H bar the magnetic field intensity. So RHS will also be minus J omega mu H bar dot multiplication with the conjugate of the same vector H bar so H asterisk. So let us say this is equation number 5 here. Similarly for the fourth equation we can have the left hand side del bar cross of H bar conjugate if you take 
and having the dot multiplication with the e bar electric field intensity on to the right hand side we have to write j bar so we take conjugate form here as we have taken conjugate of h bar so minus it will be j omega epsilon e conjugate if you take dot multiplication with e bar here so let us say this is equation number six here now we can have the subtraction of this equation number five from the equation number six so we can write here e bar i keep first of all then the dot multiplication it will be having inside the bracket del bar cross of h bar conjugate so as we can interchange the positions with the dot multiplication but not possible with the cross product so it will be having a minus sign so h bar conjugate here we take first of all then we write inside the bracket del bar cross of e bar here so on to the right hand side we obtain e bar dot of j conjugate here the first term inside the bracket of the right hand side of equation number six here and it will be having a subtraction of the second term that is j omega in the bracket here we have epsilon here we take mod square of e bar minus mu in the bracket mod square of h bar here so let us say this is equation number seven we have next to the equation number seven that we have taken from this left hand side that is having the subtraction of these two particular equation we can have the replacement of e bar dot multiplication with the complex conjugate of e bar so that we have denoted here by mod of e square here similarly this mod denotes h bar dot multiplication with h bar conjugate here now into the left hand side we have the three vectors into the role so e bar del bar and h bar so having this particular representation used by a vector identity we can have the substitution in place of this left hand side we can make del bar in the bracket e bar cross product with h conjugate bar so the right hand side will be as it is so we take minus e bar dot j bar conjugate added with j omega in the bracket here we have epsilon mod of e bar square minus mu into mod of h bar square here so let us say this is equation number eight here from equation number two and equation number five we can have the substitutions into the equation number eight and obtain the new equation the equation can be written minus one by two capital e bar dot product with uh, let us write this j zero conjugate so this is equal to one by two we have sigma e so this is actually the replacement of j bar so j bar is equal to sigma e dot with the conjugate of e bar added with here we have j omega in the bracket 1 by 2 mu h bar dot multiplication with the conjugate of h bar minus here we have again 1 by 2 epsilon e bar dot multiplication with the conjugate of e bar added with the divergence of p bar here so now we can have the next integration to this particular equation so let us say this is equation number nine integrating equation number nine we can have the representation so this is the integration over volume so it will be one by two e bar dot of j zero conjugate here we can integrate over the volume here so rhs it will be having the first component it will be the volume integral 1 by 2 sigma 
here we can substitute mod of e bar square in place of the dot multiplication of e bar with that of the complex conjugate dv the second term it will be having the j into twice omega outside as constants the volume integral of we can make w sub x m we can substitute minus w sub x e we can substitute into dv and the third term will be here for it will be closed surface integral of p bar dot of ds bar so this particular thing has been taken from the divergence theorem here instead of having the divergence we can have the closed surface integral of p bar dot of ds bar let us say this is equation number 10 here now the right hand side of this particular equation has the three terms so this is the first term having the volume integral of 1 by 2 sigma that is representing the conductivity into the mod e bar square into dv so this is actually representing the average dissipated power then we have the second term where we have the substitution in place of these two bracket terms by w sub x m and w sub x e so these are representations of the stored magnetic and the stored electric energies here and for the closed surface integral p bar dot of ds bar whatever the power has been transmitted into the direction of p bar has been shown here so the three components need to be always taken into consideration whenever the microwave propagation is there that whatever the heat is dissipated how much heat or how much energy is stored into the electric and that of the magnetic and the power that is transmitted into the direction that is normal to that of the electric and magnetic components so whenever we shall be having the output power calculations with respect to the microwave devices the background should be taken from the pointing theorem by the next lecture we shall be discussing uniform plane microwaves and reflection so i hope you understand the topic and it will be definitely beneficial to you to understand microwave engineering for more details you can subscribe to ikeda channel thank you